Six, five, four, three, two, one. Blast off. We're live. Welcome to PTZ Optics Live every Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific. Uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. There you go. Today's an exciting day for us. We're teaching you all about some tips and tricks for live streaming music. And there'll also be a live performance involved as well. Yeah. So many musicians have been reaching out to us, whether it's a one-man show at a coffee house, a small band, a DJ, or a large music conference that are using the PTZ Optics cameras. We wanted to give you guys some tips because some really incredible stuff that has been coming out today. So first of all, today is going to be all about tips for live streaming music. And you can go to ptzoptics.com slash music to download our entire guide. And we have some really cool ideas for you guys. Next, I want to talk about real-time audio processing with VST3 plugins. You can also use VST1 and 2, but the 3 plugins are even better. They're supported and they have some just amazing new possibilities we're going to tell you about. Uh, we are going to talk about ASIO drivers for USB audio interfaces, which allow you to bring in each audio input individually and therefore uh, tweak them individually. And we'll talk about what that means and how to use it. Uh, we're going to show you a real-time audio auto-tuning software, which allows you to bring in a microphone for someone and actually tune their voice in real time so that if they miss a note, it'll actually change the waveform and make it perfect. So crazy game-changing stuff that's out there today. We're going to do a live performance of Iron Man. It's going to do like half the song. So please, please Not bear even. with us. We're not, we haven't practiced much. But it's still going to be a great, I think, um, song. And then the PTZ app, there's a brand, there's a brand new Android app that uh, I want to show you really quickly. This is a $50 Amazon Fire. And it just blows my mind being in the industry for this long to see how a $50 tablet can be used for PTZ camera control. Um, I will do a demo of this later, uh, but this is the way it works right here. And it's just such a cool little app. I want to show you guys this in another video with the developer, Justin Brown. Today's streaming spotlight goes to Kyle Gunderman. Kyle spun the wheel recently and finally landed on the free PTZ Optics camera. Good for you, Kyle. Thank you so much for sharing your first use case with a poetry competition, I believe, at your uh, local high school that you work at, uh, with. So thank you for sharing that. Keep in mind, guys, voting for the 2018 Streaming Awards is now open. Make sure you're heading to streamingawards.com to vote for your favorite live streamers so they win some cool prizes. Speaking of prizes, we recently locked down and nailed down quite a few prizes that uh, we know are going to be happening for the Streaming Awards. Of course, the PTZ Optics camera is one of them. Mimo Live license, VMix license, Wirecast license, capture cards, uh, teleprompter tools, NDIHX licenses, and more. Oh, X keys too, a couple X keys as well. So thank you guys, everybody, all the sponsors that have participated in this event. Finally closing things up. Oh no, we have two more squares. He wants me to hold the Twitch one for this. Those of you watching on Twitch, we do have custom emojis now, specifically one so far, the savage emoji. So make sure you're using the savage emoji in the chat anytime you think things are getting a savage. And finally, you may have noticed our previous video is all about audio mastering in live streaming and podcasting. Really helpful video uh, to teach you just how to tweak your audio and microphones for streaming, though today is all about music. So let's get to it, shall we? Let's do it. So we're gonna start off with a quick little video to show you kind of behind the scenes of how everything got set up. And I think you're gonna find it quite interesting.
All right, so that gives you a little idea, a little behind the scenes, because today we're not going to be able to really tutorial each of the VST3 plugins and how everything got set up. But we've got a really great presentation that's going to take you through what you, we think you need to know within 20 minutes in an inform, informational webinar style platform. So let's jump, jump into our presentation. We have a really in-depth presentation that's going to take you guys through some of the most important things to know if you're going out to live stream music. So tips for live streaming music, uh, you can get this guide at ptzoptics.com slash audio. <laughs> Are we sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go over video camera and placement. We, have a, we had another video about this earlier. Audio and audio optimization. The new VST3 plugins, which literally changed the game for live audio streaming. We're going to have a live performance to put everything together for you. And then uh, we have some really great tips from our user group. And then some extras uh, about how to use this type of technology you know if you don't have if you're not doing a live performance or music these plugins are still great for any talk show any podcast any video that you're making can obviously benefit from improved audio so camera placement uh, obviously we have a camera on almost every spot that we need but with pan tilt zoom cameras especially if you're on a budget you can use a single camera to zoom into multiple positions so you could have one camera with a close-up and a wide shot. And as you cut and pan between different shots, you'll be able to use just one or two cameras to get a bunch of shots. Mike, do you want to go ahead and just go through all the, all the eight? I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six shots that we have. Uh, I just want to show you guys what you're going to see today. So we got a main shot. We have a up shot above uh, Brian's mixer. We got a close-up of Tess. Wide shot. Close-up for me. Close up for Brian. Another shot of Tess. And that's it. So um, this is a small studio, and you can see we've got six shots. Um, we can use pan tilt zoom cameras to reduce the amount of cameras and operators that you need and still get a ton of great shots. So camera controls. We talked a little bit about this earlier. Uh, there is a brand new uh, Android and iOS app that gives you a touchscreen controller with any, basically, phone now. So let's take a quick look at the picture that I have on the next page here. Uh, that's Michael using it there. It's just a $50 Android tablet uh, that can control up to eight cameras totally wirelessly with very minimal latency. Now let's talk about the interesting stuff for you musicians out there. Real-time audio optimization. That picture there is showing you the waves tune in real time, which automatically tunes someone's voice to hit the right notes, and you can put them in the octave that they should be. Um, it's just really incredible what you can do. So before we talk about uh, optimization and all of those things, you got to remember that audio is so important. It's more important than video. If your audio sucks, for lack of better words, then the stream is going to suck. The stream is going to suck. No one's going to want to watch it. So we have to know uh, how to optimize our audio and usually bringing everybody's microphones, everybody's instruments, all of your audio into a single mix is not the way to optimize properly. What you want to do is you want to use something called an OSEO driver. And an OSEO driver is an audio stream input output. It's a computer sound card protocol for digital audio, spe actually specified by Steinberg, which is the company that actually uh, created VST3 plugins. It provides ultra low latency, high fidelity interface between software applications and computer sound cards. So we need to use this in order to properly uh, optimize our audio. Now, can we show that full screen? It's getting cut off a little bit, but I think it's okay. Um, basically, what we're showing here is this is our streaming setup right now. So for audio, we have our Focusrite 18i8, and that means we can actually have 18 inputs and 8 outputs, I believe. And we have a Shure ULX system. That's our wireless microphones that we're using. And we actually have in-ear monitors. So Tess, me, and Brian all have little in-ear monitors coming back from um, our vMix system. You have to click on the desktop capture and make it a little smaller if that's what you want to do. Um, and it gives us our in-ear monitoring. So when you're listening, when you're working with musicians, they need to hear a mix. Now maybe they, Tess would have a mix of everyone except for her voice because <laughs> that could get a little confusing if you were hearing your own voice. Uh, they might give the guitar player everything uh, except his guitar, perhaps. Um, so you can do in-ear monitoring system to give people back their systems. You can see on the control side, we have an IP joystick and X keys and a smartphone app. 
Everything's going into our custom Eastern Shore Broadcasting live streaming PC with two Magewell capture cards giving us eight SDI inputs. From time to time, we have a Windows uh, NDI Telestrator we're not using today, and sometimes we use an extra computer with NDI, and we've got eight PTZ Optics cameras, all streaming to YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch for the post show. Now, our audio setup, this is pretty close to what we're looking at today. It's a little different, but we've got two uh, instruments. We have a guitar, and if I play this, I think it might come up. Can you hear that, Mike? So that's my guitar. We have a guitar bring it coming in. We have a uh, MIDI keyboard coming in. Tess and I both have microphones coming in, and each one is being brought in individually. So that means that Tess can have a different EQ than I can have or I might want to have a little bit more robust compression on my voice, and I might want to have you know, a, a guitar amplifier, which you, you might have heard the distortion on this guitar I obviously don't want on my voice. So it allows us to mix everything individually. Okay. Just showing you guys how that works. Now and your skills and my skills I had to play it off a little bit. <laughs> um, our audio setup, as we mentioned, we've got a this Focusrite eighteen i eight we use for podcasting as well and for our talk show. It's very high quality, has low noise, and I recommend it over the Behringer products any day of the week. It's much less noisy and higher quality. Uh, the Sure ULX systems are our wireless microphones, which we really like. We upgraded from the BLX system because it gives us more flexibility on where we're going. Will we be doing requests for the post show? <laughs> Maybe. Um, one of the most important things about Osseo drivers is they usually will not work in Windows unless you've set them up to be the default recording and playback devices. So that's a little snag. I never had, audio I have had this product for two years and then Brian came and was like, Are you, do you have your Osseo, Osseo drivers set up properly? I did not. And uh, the Focusrite came live. Now it has 18 inputs. I'm like, are you kidding me? So just make sure you set up your Osseo drivers properly. Now for the fun stuff. So here's the plugins that we're using. Tess, you got to play around with them with me. Yeah, the Auto-Tune one was my favorite. Yeah, you love the Auto-Tune one. Yeah. Um, we also have a Morphoder on Tess's voice. Can we show that real quick, Mike? I felt like by Beyonce with the Auto-Tune one. Um, so... Just turn Tess's mic off and turn the more photo on. I just want to show you guys what this does just really quickly. What this is, is it's basically a vocoder. Paul, give me raises every week or suffer the consequence. <laughs> so there's an example where this microphone here has an individual input on uh, effect, but we don't want that to be on like my microphone or Tessa's main microphone. It's just for that one effect. Straight out of the Saw movies. Straight out of the Saw movies. Tessa kind of scared me there. Whoa. <laughs> um, but there's an example of the more Motor. Uh, we're not going to be able to go over every single plugin, but luckily we just posted a video on our YouTube channel showing how all these can be used for a talk show. So I'll, sp I'll focus more on the ones that are used for audio. We got to get going, guys, because we have a, a music tutorial to go. The Vocal Rider is one of my favorite. Again, we don't have time to go over it. Check it out. It's one of that, the That, if you go ones. too high, it goes down. Yeah. And if you go too low, it brings it up it automatically. It automatically uh, does your fader for you. It's really so cool. cool. EQ and compression is something that if you don't know a lot about, don't be afraid of it because you can load presets for a female voice, for a male voice, for different things, and it'll get it'll make your voice so much better. Our rock and roll plug-in. This one has a million different guitar amps. I can play with it for hours. It's so cool. $50. I kept some of the um, prices on there so you guys can see it's what easy, we're paying. It's easy, kind of. <laughs> it's kind of easy. We look so crazy. Uh, yeah, but what I was making is don't worry. It, it seems like a lot, but those presets are going to save you. Uh, so again, these plugins are very affordable. In my opinion, we spent like less than $100 on, pre on plugins and they sound, make us sound so much better. This one, the Renaissance Axe, is our favorite. It boosts your audio to make it feel robust. Anyone in the chat, can you tell a difference from this today's audio from Tess and I versus what it used to sound like in previous shows? Hopefully it's better. Hopefully it's a lot better. Um, 
interesting thought though on that Michael and I were talking about it. Most people today are listening to our stream on smartphones, on headphones, on monitors, not like really high end headphones. So be aware of that and make sure that you're not like going to the highest highs because sometimes when you go to like 90%, even though you're not clipping, it still might kind of sound bad on cheap or uh, f phones and, and speakers. So we posted this video you can check out later. Uh, if your live streaming software does not support VST3 plugins as vMix does in vMix uh, 20, they're on 21 now, you can use a virtual audio cable with different pieces of software like Cubase, Dante, Mahdi, Wave Sound Grid is what I'm going to start playing around with, and bring them into Wirecast, OBS, XSplit, or a TriCaster. So it's one workaround, and it actually might give you some cool functionality. Tips from the user group, really quickly, Tess. You want to read a couple of these? Sure. You guys are so helpful. And luckily, we have a really talented and experienced uh, user base in the community. So thank you guys so much. Tips straight from our user group. Pull your audio straight from the main center event board if possible. That will give you the clearest audio, says Scott Slidester. Yeah, Did thanks, I pronounce Scott. his last yeah, name? Yeah, that's right. right. And then uh, the other thing to think of what Jay Ashworth was saying, that the front of house engineer is going to be mixing for live speakers and not the broadcast. And this has been my experience. So optimally, you can split off inputs to give you remote access to one of his auxiliary mixes so that you can mix it yourself. Because you can't use these plugins if the front of house person in charge of the PA is just giving you a full mix. Like mm. you might want just the audio from the vocals. You might just want a guitar, for example. Mm -hmm. And that way the broadcast mix is can be like literally studio quality. Yeah, if they have like a crowd mic or something, you could separate that. Funny you mentioned that. Jeff Kathy said, make sure you get some mics for the crowd so you can pick up the applause. I swear I wasn't like on with that. It's funny. Uh, and then Russell says he places two to three microphones strategically around, especially if he has an orchestra, to emphasize the brass and percussion. But those mixes, they don't go to the front of house. That's separate from the PA system. They go to his own board where he gets an aux audio out and therefore, you know, so think about maybe bringing your own audio microphones and system as well, just for the broadcast. Then finally, just don't forget, Seth Haberman was telling us that the front of house board has an expansion slot like Dante. Uh, you can pull off audio channels via the network with live DAW. And that's really, really the future. If you've got a good stream audio guy, he can make it sound like a live album. If you're a Wirecast user, Michael Tucker was saying, uh, you can use the Blackmagic Decklink card as an audio ingest source with the latest update, which is capable of bringing 16 audio inputs per channel. Fairlight have some 3D audio tools, but Blackmagic has shelved these. He wishes he could use them more. Thank you, Michael Tucker, for, for that great information. Additional thoughts? You might want to provide a confidence monitor if you can. What we're reading this off of right now. <laughs> Nice to put it next to the cameras as well. If you're in a studio setting and you expect your talent to be looking at the camera like you're doing a music video, give them tally lights so they know which camera to look at. And then finally, join our Facebook user group at facebook.com slash group slash This is where we're requesting this information and this is where the information is being put too if you're interested to hear more about what our uh, members of our community said. All right, guys, it's time for the live performance. I'm a little nervous. Guys, just remember, we're broad, we're live streamers. We're not necessarily musicians, but we thought it'd be fun. Right, Let's will you test. put this over there? So we're going to do a couple Let's live see. tests so you guys can, It's a tutorial, right? So can you guys hear that? Got the ex distortion on? How about this test? Is that working? Is the robot on? That's what we need to know. Okay. It's on. All right, we're ready, guys. Can he see or is he 
blind? Has he alive or dead? Has he thoughts within his head? He was turned to steel in a great magnetic field. We'll just pass him there. Why should we even care? Nobody wants him. He just stares at the world. show switch to twitch with us we might take a couple of requests but it's more about the show the trivia the giveaway we'll see you guys soon